Let me guess, you want to write an Enneagram Type 3 character for your story or fanfiction because you heard that using Enneagram and storytelling will make things easier. True, although maybe you don't even know what to start with, like, yeah, Type 3s are notorious workaholics and achievers, but actually, how does all of that even work? It's really not enough to just read the type descriptions to implement it in your characters. Or maybe you're just here to chill, who knows. Now let's get down to business. What do you actually need to know about this whole Enneagram thing to successfully use it on fictional characters. As I said, the description alone is not gonna cut it because, let me tell you, it's just going to make things even more confusing. What you really need to know is your character's basic fear plus goal set and how those might change in different wings, because wings are important. So let's start with something simple. The bottom line is that Enneagram, this whole personality system, is not about cognitive functions like MBTI or not about moral alignment or whatever. Enneagram is actually based on the idea that there are primarily nine types of fear plus goal sets in human society. It means that every person or a fictional character you will ever meet will have one of those nine fear plus goal sets. For example, Enneagram type 3 is the type of people who, more than anything, strive to achieve things in life, hence the nickname Achiever. They want to be recognized for their accomplishments and be successful. Their biggest fear, on the other hand, is not being those things, as simple as that. Not being accomplished, not being famous for their success, basically they fear of not being successful the most. Yeah, so what I just described is the fear plus goal match or set call whatever you want. And every Enneagram type will have a unique combination of those. But for today's video, we are going to be focusing on the Enneagram type 3 specifically. So we got over the most important thing. Now let's work with wings a little bit, because let me tell you a little secret. There are actually 18 Enneagram types. Yeah, sorry. Why? Because every character is going to have a subtype. The subtype thing could only be one of the adjacent types on the Enneagram will, thanks to God. So, if we are talking about type 3, they can only have either wing 4 or wing 2 as their subtype, and it will influence their basic goal plus fear pair in one way or another, that's just how it works. Let's start with 3 wing 4. They would still be achievers with a desire to set and accomplish goals, but they are going to be doing that because, and here their subtype 2 comes into play, they want to be loved and admired. So, they seek validation through accomplishment, because type 2's basic fear is not to be loved. And you can kind of see how it influencing their main type here. So 3 wing 2s still want to be successful, but in this case because they want to be loved and admired by other people. So here we're talking about external validation. Let's take a look at a few examples of 3 wing 2 Enya type characters from fiction, just so you know, to get a better understanding. Lady Dimitrescu from Resident Evil Village. I already talked about this character once in one of my older videos, but we never looked at her from the Enneagram typing standpoint. So Lady D might not be that easy to type at first, glance because, let's be real, she didn't have much screen type in the game, to everyone's disappointment. But based on what we saw, she's somewhat a clear example of an Enneagram 3 wing 2. Besides the fact that she gives off major 3 wipes with all of that flair for the sake of looking more put together and successful than all the other lords in the game, she uses her achievements to get validation from one person that she actually respects, and that is Mother Miranda. So everything Lady Dimitrescu does actually serves just one particular purpose, which is to be loved, respected and admired by, well, everyone, but especially that one person. Her fear of failure isn't internal, it is in fact external, and it comes from other people. Next up, Blitz from Hell of a Boss. Now, this also might not be very obvious at first sight, but let's dive a little deeper. So Blitz and Lady D, for example, are very different people, creatures, whatever, and their type and subtype manifest themselves in slightly different ways. So Blitz's 3 wing 2 is very unhealthy and it kind of abstracts the view on the character. Every Enneagram type can be either healthy, semi-healthy, or just straight up toxic, and here we are dealing with a crap ton of toxicity. Now, this toxicity comes from Blitz's traumatic childhood, naturally. So, in one of the later episodes of the show, we see his backstory a little bit and we learn that he actually dreamed of running his own circus and basically doing whatever he wanted with it. That didn't quite work out the way he wanted, but he still ended up being a business owner. So, this strong desire to be independent and cooler than everyone else and taking on risks just to prove other people his coolness, which he does a lot on the show, is the Enneagram Type 3 show. Now about the wing 2. So Blitz had many relationships in his life, but actually none of them seem to really 
work out. And besides that, Blitz shows some real creep tendencies and he openly admits stalking and again creeping on Moxie and Millie. And I think that this is because he is actually hella, see what I did there, jealous of their relationship. He doesn't and he's never had anything that could even come close to what those two have. And love and relationship is what twos usually crave from life the most. So his need to be the coolest guy in town, be independent and loved pretty much just makes him an unhealthy Enneagram rewing too. Also, I feel like I have to talk about this so you don't get confused. If we are talking about Enneagram 3 wing 2 and MBTI matches, in truth, any MBTI type could be an Enneagram 3 wing 2. But there are, of course, some correlations with MBTI for this particular type, and we are going to talk about it just a little bit. So for Enneagram 3 wing 2, the most popular MBTI type matches would probably be ENFJ, ESFJ, ENTJ, ESTJ, ESFP, ESTP. So basically all FE DOMs, TE DOMs and SE DOMs. Again, this is just the most likely to be scenario. Your character could just as easily be an INFP 3-wing 2, for example. So, okay, we are getting a hang of it. So now what's with Enneagram 3-wing 4? So this is the second possible subtype or wing, if you will, for Enneagram 3. And again, besides still being someone who strives for accomplishment and success, 3-wing 4s are also going to be particularly bothered by being unique and having a significant impact on the world. So in this case we are working with characters who are not craving recognition for the sake of being loved and admired, I mean they do that too, but more for the sake of making a statement about their identity. So they will throw themselves into work just to show everyone how unique they are or their view of the world, that kind of thing. So compared to Enneagram 3 wing 2s, they are actually going to be more focused on what they value and how they want to be presented. So the possibility of them, for example, changing who they are and what they like and want to bring into the world just for the sake of being admired and loved is kind of small and non-existent. Again, let's take a look at the examples. Dio Brando from Jojo's Bizarre Adventures, a very clear example of a three-wing four character. His initial goal was to climb the social ladder as fast as possible and get money and respect. He had a very problematic childhood with a problematic parent, so Dio wanted nothing more for his legacy to be different. He didn't necessarily want to be loved and admired by other people for the sake of it, like a three-wing two would. On top of everything else, he wanted all of that power and respect so that others can recognize his unique identity. He put a lot of pressure on looking and being different from other people. First, it was just his birth family, then everyone else. So at the end, it kind of snowballed into, you know, this. One could also say that wanting to be the strongest person or the most powerful person is usually a goal that is heavily associated with Enneagram Type 8. And that is true. Although people of Enneagram Type 8 want to be perceived as strong just for the sake of it and not to be admired for being strong. Next on our list, Reagan Ridley. There, there is, is no, no fucking, fucking way, way I'm, I'm gonna, gonna pronounce, pronounce her name. Like I did it. Before we go there, I just have to say that this character was very inconsistent throughout the series, but that doesn't change the fact that she is in fact a 3 wing 2 Enya type. So how does that show itself? If you've seen the show, you don't really need a detailed explanation on that, but for everyone who is still unsure, I'm going to clear this up. So Reagan is a kind of a mad scientist who has very bad people skills, is twisted on making literally everything in her life as efficient as possible, even though that makes no sense most of the times, and seeks adoration and validation for her achievements. Since she is a scientist, all of her achievements are in the science field, but in pretty much every other aspect of her life she fails and she is aware of it. So she is actively trying to prove her worth to, first of all, herself by creating new cool technologies. She also planning on taking over the world one day, which smells like another toxic three. We see a lot of overlap if we compare her to Dio, for example. The need to prove their worth to themselves, to be domineering in one way or another, and to be unique and also be be better than everyone else. And that sums it up quite nicely if I say so myself. Also keep in mind Enneagram 3 wing 4's most likely MBTI correlations. ENTJs with a somewhat developed FI, ESFP, ESTP, or well, maybe ENTP. But overall anything could work really as I said. So let's get into the juicy stuff. So me and my subs had this little contest going on on my channel for maybe a month or so. The thing is I never actually did my type reveal and many people were interested so I promised to give a shout out to those of my viewers who made a correct yes. So here are the heroes, here are their pretty and gorgeous names, they made a correct guess. And with that said, now this is not a reason to get shitless drunk, but I think I'm gonna go have some tea after that. Bye!